Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of the 980 Know It All podcast. I am your host, Josh, and this is episode number nine, lucky number nine for the 980 Know It All group. I'm excited today. I have a guest in Kyle Crustangel. He is the head coach for the Yakima Valley Community College, as well as the head coach for the Yakima Valley Pippins, a member of the West Coast League out here in the Northwest. And I'm excited to have him on. He's a part of a program that really has a a rich history uh, in terms of baseball. So I'm excited to have him come on, talk a little bit about that history, talk a little bit about just what he's doing during this time. But guys, before we jump into any of that, I do want to say once again, thank you to those people who are sponsoring Not Any Know It All through Patreon. I'll be honest, this this podcast doesn't exist without fans like them who think that this is important enough to give us a couple dollars each month, you know, and that, that makes a big deal for us. So if you are considering becoming a supporter of Not Any Know It All, go to Patreon, even if it's $2 a month, $3 a month, anything at all helps us out because it helps cover the costs of hosting the site, hosting the podcast, uh, just the, the app that I use to record all the audio and all the calls that I have come in for the podcast. I mean, every bit of it, it, it helps once games get going, helps me get to, to games that I normally wouldn't be able to get to because uh, of the cost of gas and, and everything. So Patreon is a huge thing makes a big deal to to us to be able to keep moving forward doing what we're doing and I do want to give a big shout out uh, to one of our business supporters that's gold card auctions uh, they've come on become a supporter you can actually find uh, their logo and their link to their site on the 90 know it all webpage just scroll down just a little bit it'll be on the right hand side uh, it's right there easy to see but you know it's just one of those things where it means a big deal to me to have those supporters and you know what, and just having people listen to the podcast. It's so fun. It's so exciting. I'll be honest. It's this podcast has taken off far faster than I thought it would. I think at this point, once again, this is episode number nine. And I think I've already reached about 350 listens between the other two. So it's mind blowing just how fast this is going, but it's also pretty awesome. So guys right now I do want to get into this and You know what? I am just so honored that this person took the time to come on. Kyle, how are you doing today? Hey, I'm doing great. Excited to uh, be here. Thanks for having me on. So, Kyle, obviously, right now, this is this is a pretty weird time for for all of us. But for you as a coach, what is it like right now to not be really almost in the heart of what would have been your schedule for region play? What is it like right now? It's extremely tough. You know, I think you spend so much time with the guys. I mean, I always kind of joke with them on the recruiting visits that I'm going to spend more time with them than I will my family and my wife. And, you know, it's, you know, to to have us get to 12 games in, spend the last six and a half months, and then kind of just everything, the world flipped upside down. It's, uh, it's chaotic. And, you know, one thing for our staff was, you know, we did not want to you know, just kind of send them on their way and kind of have it be done. We, you know, had our exit meetings and we really tried to give um, some development feedback in terms of their tools and what they can do. So, you know, we want to stay highly involved, but just from a time, I mean, I don't know the last time I had multiple weeks off where there's not a whole lot to do in terms of being at the field and being with the guys. Um, It's been uh, nice, I guess, in another way to kind of grow as a coach and learn just taking as many Zoom calls and, and uh, things as I can to kind of keep growing. Um, I know my whole staff is doing that as well, but, you know, you just miss the guys. I mean, you get them to the point you want. We're finally playing great baseball, and then, you know, obviously no more games. And uh, every time it's a Wednesday or Saturday, you know, our coaching staff kind of texts back to who we should be playing today, and it's, uh, you know, it's tough. Yeah, I know. I, I know for me personally, I, I keep looking at the calendar thinking, oh, I, I should have been this game today or I should have been this stadium. And it's just, it's even weird for me. And, you know, I'm not a coach, not a player, just just media, but man, it is, it's weighing on me quite a bit. And and I just can't imagine, even for your players, what, what else are you guys doing or what else are your players doing to help them get through this time? Yeah, so we, you know, one thing is, is this, you know, I think early on, I mean, you knew it was happening overseas and it was kind of here, but you never really thought the impact would be what it is today. So we, you know, we felt as a staff it was important to be transparent. So even though before the NWAC canceled the season, you know, we were not, we were just keeping in the loop. Here's exactly the knowledge, you know, that I knew. 
at the time. Um, and then once we got the word, you know, we made sure to emphasize that we're in all of our guys' corners. And, you know, for you sophomores, we'll have some decisions to be made. You know, we're keeping you at the forefront. And each guy is truly in a different situation than the next. Um, so we, we, did, we did exit meetings really quickly. We spent one day um, as coaching staff for about seven hours and had every guy on a one-on-one -on -one meeting um, and kind of helped lay out what the next two and a half months looks like. Talked about, you know, summer ball placements. Um, but again, I know Coach Cash, um, you know, we print out our uh, development sheets and uh, he kind of spent some time talking about tools. And then we went as a staff to kind of how you can develop maybe one or two of your tools that are um, a little bit uh, weak. I mean, you think of the college athlete, they're constantly, constantly in game mode. They show up as freshmen in the fall and all it is is try to earn your way and then fight for a spot mode. And then you get to spring and it's trying to see college games for the first time. And now you got sophomores and freshmen competing for spots and they go straight to summer ball. You know, how much time is truly, you know, of the 12 months devoted to just being able to take three steps back to take five steps forward. And the answer is usually just January, you know, maybe a little bit of December, January, you know, now they're going to have a solid two and a half months, if not longer um, with summer ball that they can truly just work on some skills and not have the game wear and tear on the body. But, you know, Hey, if our arm tool or, or speed tool or, or something is lacking, you know, let's figure out how to make it better. And kind of it's our job as coaches to hold them accountable as we can, but at the same time, at least give them the resources that they need. Yeah, definitely. And, you know, one of the things that I've realized talking with people is how important summer ball is going to be this year for a lot of players and just, you know, hoping that it gets back. I mean, obviously we don't know the current situation, what's going to be like in June or, or July, but, you know, for you as a coach, you know, both as a summer league coach with the, the Pippins, but also with the Yakima Valley, you know, looking at your players and sending them off to places, what things are you hoping to see come out of this summer if we're back playing baseball? Yeah, I, I think just getting games at bats and innings. You know, I think normally it's it's interesting because my perspective is usually a tad bit different just because, you know, once we start playing, you have pitchers that are in the 60 to 70 innings by the end of the year, the way that the East does Wednesday, Saturday, and the way playoff structure. I mean, we had a guy last year, Alec Gomez, throw 90, 90 plus innings in the NWAC, and he threw on six days rest the entire year. He just gave you eight to nine innings every single time. So his inning count was high, but he was always on proper rest and arm care. But you get the summer and you don't want that guy to throw a lot of innings. Well, now we're in the reverse where all the work's been set up, their bodies are functioning, they're healthy, and now we just got to go out there and, and play. So I'll be looking for our guys, you know, to go compete, but at the same time, you know, get their at-bats and get what they need. I feel like a lot of times, you know, you're not shutting guys down for summer, but they've had the wear and tear on their body of 150 at bats. It's how do you get better, but also not just, you know, destroy the body. So now it's, you know, it's kind of reversed. Let's get, our guys, and I'm sure all guys are going to be hungry just to go play. So just, you know, getting game repetition. I mean, half our rosters are freshmen at the JUCO level, and those guys just barely got a taste of what college baseball is. So we try to get those guys in college summer leagues, and now let's go play, you know, 50 games and get your – 100, 150 at bats and use the in-game development, you know, during the summer as we didn't get the opportunity for all that um, work in the spring. So I think summer ball would be fantastic. I mean, obviously I wear two hats, but not just as a talent going to be better in every single league, but you're going to have guys hungry. It's going to be no longer, you know, just summer ball, which I think that term is spiraled well out of control. Um, we try to really make our guys come in for the Pippins and develop and get better and have accountability. But you know, you get some people that kind of play for a Twitter video and things like that that kind of frustrate me. But now it's just a bunch of guys that want their reps. So I think the the motivation, the carrot, everything is going to be there for the coaches and the players to just thrive. And I'm sure, you know, I want our guys to, to compete for championships. And I think some people laugh and they think about summer ball championships, but what a great time this year with baseball kind of taken away to put a huge emphasis, you know, on winning and competing and grinding and, you know, a lot of those characteristics that sometimes – um, depending on who the summer program is, can kind of get put off second. But, you know, I want the, our guys, you know, falling in love with just competing in the grind again. Yeah, definitely. I've seen, you know, especially on Twitter, you can see guys who just in the words they're typing, you can see that hunger for getting it back on the field. And and I, I'm excited for the summer. I'm excited for, for what it's going to be like. And for you, I mean, you're now with the, the Pippins as their head coach. What's it like to be the head coach of both Yakima Valley and the Pippins, same towns, you know, be able to be – you know, really at home all year long. What's it like for you? It's a, it's a blessing, man. I feel so blessed for opportunities that, uh, that I've been given. I mean, coming into Yakima, not from here, just complete arms open, massive baseball community, unbelievable AD and, and Ray Funk. Um, just a community that really supports and loves 
not just sports, but baseball in general. So, you know, and I was here, obviously I was with Wenatchee the pre- previous three summers and have nothing but the most utmost respect for that organization. It was just, it was hard. Like you mentioned, I was, you know, having to go away all summer and my wife would sometimes come with me, but have to work at home. I, I bought a house a year ago. So it just, you know, it was tough. It was tough to have the yaks, you know, for recruiting and kind of everything I had to do. You know, we made it work, but it wasn't ideal. So when I resigned from the Apple Sox, um, it was just, I needed to be in Yakima. And then when the opportunity came up like a day or two level, uh, later to, uh, to do both, I mean, it's truly a dream. And I feel like, you know, I got the best situation and, and I love it. Uh, both, you know, Garrettson, who uh, GM for the Pippins has been amazing to me and to my family. And I just, I feel really blessed to be able to coach both programs that, uh, you know, come from good backgrounds of, of culture and winning and fan support and financial support that, uh, like I said, it just, just, I was very humbled and very blessed with the opportunity. And I look forward to, you know, just to keep, uh, keep going and keep bringing, you know, quality players into YBC and, and quality talent in, uh, into the Pippins to keep kind of that love and passion of the game strong. Yeah. You know, and talking about talent and, and kind of history, you know, Yakima Valley has a pretty deep and rich history in terms of baseball, I mean, if you go through the the NWAC championships uh, through the last de- through the decades, Yakima Valley pops up over and over and over again. And what's it like to be a head coach of a of a program that really is so storied? I mean, really in the NWAC, there's maybe Lower Columbia kind of has that same feel, but but Yakima Valley really has a deep, long history with baseball. Yeah, and it was something that, you know, I, I think is, you know, being in Spokane and I was assistant coach at Whitworth and was trying to, you know, get uh, get my kind of th- the first job. I applied for a few and got Yakima. And, you know, I think I didn't even necessarily realize it until I got here. I mean, obviously, I knew Bobo Brayton and, and Coach Fowler, just two of the two of the guys that uh, have a lot of titles under their belt in history. But, you know, I looked up on that on that uh, banner in the gym when I got the job and, you know, you see 20 titles. And you start seeing that and understanding the history and the field and kind of what makes it special. And I think one of the biggest reasons that it has been special is just there hasn't been a ton of coaching carouseling going on. You've seen some some coaches that have been tenured in the NWAC for long periods of time. I mean, five years plus. You got Fowler, 25 years plus. Brayton, 10. I mean, there's, there hasn't been a ton of coaches. And there's just there's been great ties with uh, a couple coaches with the Pippins. Um, and when the Yakima Bears were here, I mean, you're in a, a place that – comes from a rich history. So when I got here, it was, uh, like I said, very humbling. You see a lot of people walk into their first head job in a much different kind of like you have to completely rebuild and go ground up. And, you know, it's a little walk in a situation where McKimmy had an outstanding roster and a great basis and all the previous coaches had kind of that winning install instilled in. It, it, for us, it was creating a culture and our, and our flair, but, you know, you didn't have to go hit the emergency panic button and everything and just change. You're, you're coming from you know, truly a program of greatness. So we got very blessed and just, like I said, things have just worked out unbelievable for, for me and, and, and for my family. And, you know, we're definitely very thankful that you walk into a program like that. But, you know, it's crazy the year in, in 2016 um, when we won it, you know, I didn't, I didn't even realize that uh, the award you win at the end of the year when you get presented your trophy for a title is the Bill Fowler Award. <laughs> you know, that's, that's what our, our field's named after, the legendary YBC coach. Yeah, definitely. And, uh, you know, in fact, I was looking through photos earlier and saw pictures of uh, the 2016 NWAC tournament that you guys won. And what was it like to go through that too? I mean, obviously that tournament is a great tournament. I've covered it now since, since 2015. I love it. I mean, it's just, it's amazing. But what's it like for you to have gone through and won that title? Man, I, I get uh, goosebumps thinking about it. You know, I think words, it's hard to describe. It's, you know, I remember, you know, something kind of funny was that year, you know, uh, I brought about eight to 10 guys of my own. It was a team that missed the playoffs the year before. We knew we were talented. I remember, you know, getting to February and, and, and some of the colleges are reaching out the four years asking me, you know, what we thought of our guys and our team. And, you know, the joke was like, I really don't know. <laughs> we look pretty good. I know we got a good, a pretty good culture in place, but, you know, shoot, I don't know. I haven't been in the NWAC since 2006 as a player. Um, it's 10 years later and I came from division three in terms of uh, coaching and, you know, you start getting into our season and, you know, a lot of people don't realize that our record wasn't amazing. I mean, I think we were 35 and 17, which 17 is a lot of losses to carry. And, you know, we had a, we had a stretch right before conference play started that uh, we were playing. I think we had a, a little T, I think it's kind of a T-Bird tournament. It was like uh, Everett, uh, Tacoma, Edmonds, so kind of some big dogs. And we hadn't played those type of teams yet. And our guys were, 
you know, kind of fired up and we're spending it as kind of our time, you know, we're not ranked in polls yet. No one knows who we are, like our time to kind of put ourselves on the map. And we, we uh, really got our guys fired up and we went to that uh, little last little non-league tournament and uh, went 0 and 6, got destroyed. We got 10 ran by Edmonds. We got no hit our last game by Pierce. Um, you know, we played absolutely terrible baseball. We benched our sophomores. We kind of remember coming back from that trip as coaching staff, kind of like, this was our time. Like, what just happened? And, you know, it was a good chance to put them in the stands. And at that point, it was kind of the, the word sacrifice. We had to, all of us, coaches included, had to sacrifice and change up our priorities and what we wanted to achieve. And I think we would end up going, like, won our next 16 in a row to open up conference play. But kind of fast forwarding, you know, we end up dogpiling um, to win the East and uh, obviously a special moment, but, you know, then the tournament. And I think for me, I hadn't been there as a player. I hadn't been there to go watch as a fan. I hadn't been there. Uh, I didn't go when I was at Lourdes to, to recruit there. So I had never walked in. And I remember walking in and seeing that first game and there was just an energy. I mean, it was, it was every team on the top of the dugouts, coaches coaching as hard as they can, players leaving on the line. You got bench players that don't care. They're not playing. I mean, they're, they're all in and you get a first you get the best view in the house of this because you're right there with the teams. I mean, it, it's special. And I think you don't understand. So I remember seeing that first game and you think you're pretty loose and you got the squad you want and you're a one seed. And then all of a sudden you start watching the first game. I think Treasure Valley was playing somebody. So you're watching something team. And, you know, all of a sudden looking at my staff, like you get nervous. I mean, you're out there and the butterflies start going. And, um, you know, so we you get to that first game and playing Chemeketa. And, uh, you know, our, our guys were hungry. They were scrappy. Uh, a bunch of grinders that didn't care about records and didn't care about, you know, the rankings. And I think that it takes that type of team to kind of, to try to pull an upset. And I felt like, you know, us going in, you know, we were not, no means a favorite or even, you know, a lot of people's, you know, top couple, but, you know, our staff carried us. I think we opened up the tournament with 27 straight scoreless innings. We threw three straight games worth of zeros on the board um, with a bunch of guys that were 83, 85, but could, could pinpoint location. And, we were getting past uh, Everett in game two, and you know you got to play lower at their field. The night game, winner of the championship, and at that point it was kind of that first point where you could feel amongst the guys like we can do this. You know, you kind of walk in, and everyone believes you can do it. But you get to game one, you win game two, and, and pretty soon you're looking at the at the sheet. You're like, man, this we can do it. We can get there, guys. And uh, you know, you knew that game was going to be a dog fight with Joel Warden on the mound. We had a, a freshman Hunter Boyd probably the two most biggest competitors of the tournament that you had to pry the ball out of their hands. And, you know, we win one nothing bottom of the ninth, um, you know, when, when Joel kind of got squeezed, which is how we got a guy on first. And uh, just you win that game and it's kind of, you could see the light in our eyes, like we're doing this. And at that point you kind of knew, uh, as you, you had the full, you know, just belief that it was going to happen. And then sure enough, uh, it worked out great that, you know, Lower had to play uh, Everett. They both threw their ones. We had to play the winner in a one-game take-all since we had lost the day before and kind of that goofy game four, uh, just how the bracket works. And uh, ended up throwing our one versus two and got the win. But, you know, this, words don't describe it. It's, uh, it's, uh, it's goosebumps. You know, our guys, that group still talks all the time and posts. And, uh, you know, that team's obviously extremely special. But just each time I show up there, I've been there, you know, our team's been there three times in four years. It's, it's the same. It's that same special – butterfly nerves that you know you want it's just an unbelievable atmosphere you know I give the utmost respect to all of the people at lower and, and Kirk Rowan and all of them that put so many countless hours in to make it special I mean it is truly a, a special event that's put on and uh, you know you see a lot of just first class people and uh, and teams there that are playing hard to, to fight uh, it's just you know like I said it's hard to put into words it's special yeah definitely I've I've really enjoyed being there I mean I've obviously been to games all across the, the West coast and that tournament is just, it's something unique. I, I can't even put my finger on it. It's just, it's a lot of fun, but also for, for you, Kyle, you're pretty active on social media in terms of the yak Twitter account, that type of stuff. And one of the things that I see you doing on a pretty regular basis is really kind of uh, shouting out and giving credit to the guys who have moved on to division one schools or division two, you know, what's it like to see, so many former yaks doing so good at the at the upper levels it's so it's so fun i mean i i uh you know it's funny coach cash and i were talking to a parent not too long ago of a recruit and it's like you know what he, he said it best and it's the best to put in words i mean when we see the johnny sage and the zach and keep signed to these division ones i mean i feel like our staff sometimes it feels like we're signing there too i mean i, I really 
I know deep down that each coach is equally as happy for a kid going to a D3, NEI, or a Division One, And that's really our goal is, as a, you know, a two-year school is for us, we take pride in giving every guy hopefully the opportunity to play four years of baseball. And it's our job to guide and help with the money and financials and, and all that type of stuff. And obviously there's a lot of other things that go into it. But, you know, we always say we don't want to be – you know, a, a destination, you know, why we see to be a stepping stone. You're, you're coming to us to develop and get better and win and compete. But at the end of the day, like it's, it's, we take very, a lot of pride in those guys moving on. And, you know, I remember last year um, there was a game on TV and, and Purdue was playing and, and I can't remember who they were playing, but they were playing, I'd have been Marshall or somebody, but both teams, you know, had, uh, had a former yak and even guys that didn't play with them. It was in the weight room. And I remember walking in to see our trainer and, there's like 30 guys watching the TV and you're like, Oh, what's, you know, what, what games being played? And all of a sudden it's guys that didn't even play with a Johnny Sage. They're like, Hey, Sage is at bat. And it's, you know, it's cool. It's one of those few moments that you know that culture is working and the pride of just them celebrating. And, you know, I remember my first year, you know, not understanding when a guy signs and what does that mean to everybody else? You know, does that mean that oh, coach isn't supporting me? And it's to the point now where they know and they all get it just as excited for one another. I mean, when they tweet out where they're gone and I tweeted out that day at practice, every guy's giving them, hugs and handshakes and, and all that stuff. So it's, uh, it's, it's an unbelievable feeling. And then to be able to track them all and watch and see the success, it's, it's, uh, it's just it's another undescribable moment as a coach. It just, you just feel great and that they can have success at another level. Um, you know, they put so much time into effort with not a ton of rules compared to NCA in terms of sometimes the work during the fall. And these guys put in thousands of hours and then to go watch them be successful at their dream schools that they never thought was possible. It's, you know, you think about all that work that player put in to put himself I mean, he's the reason he's there and he truly you know devoted his nine months to two years for to get as good as absolutely possible um you know a lot of trust on both sides but uh, no it's, it's an awesome feeling and then even more fun when I can bring those guys back on my summer teams and get one more chance to coach them is also pretty special yeah definitely I mean even for me I I'll see guys playing games on, on ESPN and be like, hey, I, I photographed him or I interviewed him. And for me, it's, it's even exciting just to see that, especially I love the NWAC is so amazing talent-wise. And I've been blown away just how much uh, every school, I mean, schools in each region are, are sending guys on. It, it really is an amazing talent, an amazing conference that I think people get just get overlook it because they think that the Northwest doesn't have the same level of baseball. But I, re I think that this is a pretty solid area uh, for baseball. It is. And I think, I think in the last few years, you know, with just how much uh, ABCA and social media and Twitter has kind of blown up in the baseball world, it's just, it couldn't be any better for, for the Northwest because, you know, you look at like, uh, we had a guy that originally had signed to a North Carolina school and they, that coach was telling us there were 17 D1s in that state alone. Well, over here, you got five, six, seven states that only have roughly seven Division One programs. So you do see a lot of guys end up in JUCO or that do get overlooked. But I think, you know, bridging the gap with just social media and how quick phone calls, texting and, and numbers, the baseball Northwest that can post a lot of different stats up there and, and track the VLOs and, and exit stuff exit velocities. I mean, you're really able to get a player blown up. And I think it's, it really helps um, an area like the Northwest. And I think there, there's been a big reason. And kind of with that is why the sophomore showcase has been so much more highly attended by colleges and pro scouts. And why I feel like, I mean, I'd played here in this time in 06. And I felt like there was nowhere near the same amount of guys playing four years of baseball, let alone guys going to power fives and the draft. And I mean, it, it's a work of the whole conference and Marco and kind of it takes everybody um, to help and to grow. And I, I love about the NWAC because a lot of people aren't getting reflected in terms of how much money we make, but it's just the true passion and love of the game. I mean, they're here to truly better the players and the programs and, and not just to win, but they're also in it for the guys. And, and I think it takes a lot of that in this area. Um, and I think that's why you're starting to see these Northwest guys. I mean, it, I was just a couple of guys just in the last year that are, you know, on big league coaching staffs with Tanner Swanson and Craig Driver um, Kai Correa, and that's three guys in big league dugouts from the Northwest. So it's, you know, I feel the Northwest is finally, you know, definitely getting the recognition that it deserves and people are aware. And that's why each year it seems like more and more NWAC players, whether they're on the best teams or the worst teams, you know, all those levels of teams are producing major, major players that have huge impacts at all four year levels. Yeah, definitely. You know, it's been, it's been awesome to see just how many guys get signed, how many guys move up to the upper levels. And then, 
No, but obviously teams are pretty large and you can't do it by yourself. And you've had a, a pretty amazing group of, of assistant coaches. You know, what's it like having those guys who have been in there with you day in and day out and, and doing the grind just like you are? Man, it's, uh, it's, it's uh, no words. I've said a few times on this, but you're hitting some of the, 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 the subjects that's true. And, uh, you know, to have the staff I've had has just been unbelievable. I mean, really the, the, uh, at the JUCO level, you see so much turnaround because of money. And, you know, when I got the job, you know, obviously completely struck gold with cash. He's as good as there is. He's that guy's a, it pushes me to be not just a better coach, but a better person. It's like we push each other. Um, you know, Tyler Von Dresik came on staff, um, with us. He's no longer on staff as now he's moved up to, uh, get his sports admin degree from Gonzaga, but he's a former yak. He's extremely prideful in the yak program, the yak way. Um, you know, and he was awesome. I mean, I have coach Sires now who I coached my first year. Um, he's kind of our volunteer. And I mean, that guy is in the office every day. And I think that's where we're blessed is it's not, you know, I'm in the office every single day, cash works, his other job in the office every day and coach Sires, um, you know, coach Cameron, our new pitching coach is a, a high school teacher, but I mean, we have three coaches literally in the baseball office every single day. Um, we've expanded to five coaches um, that all have massive roles. I mean, you know, obviously with the amount of stuff that you're allowed to do, it, it, you can't have one person. And for, you know, for me to just not have the turnover, um, you know, just it's, it's been a, a complete blessing. We're, we're nowhere close to where we are today without the assistance that put in countless hours for low money, um, low money to no money. I mean, we're nowhere close, but those guys can each have a, a plate filled up as big as mine um, to accomplish everything we want. And I, I've, you know, been lucky enough to run into guys that care more about the players and, and, and the, uh, the love and passion than just the guys trying just to quote unquote, move up and find the next job and this and that. But we love where we're, we're exactly where our feet are at. We felt like we all feel like we're here to positively impact as many people as possible. And we feel like, you know, we're here for the players first. And that's the most important thing is, you know, we're able to all put ourselves kind of second. Um, but again, I, I can't speak highly enough of, just the guys that have been around me. I mean, like I said, we're nowhere close um, without those guys. And just the lack of turnover is, is pretty, uh, it's pretty crazy. If you look at some of the best programs and uh, that's kind of a common characteristic is just whether it's the head coach or the assistants, you know, there's at least some common, um, you know, people around when it comes to recruiting and developing and moving them on. There's not a million pieces. You're seeing the same people. So, Kyle, before I let you go, I got one more question for you, and it's really kind of dealing with the players, both at the high school and the college level. Right now, obviously, everybody's kind of stuck at home. What advice do you have for the players at the different levels on what they should be doing right now so that way they're at their best come, whether it's this summer or this fall? I think they just got to stay consistent. I mean, these guys are such guys are routine, and a lot of times it's us giving them their routine. They know – when they have baseball, when they have lifting, when they have um, class, and everything's laid out. And now that, you know, we're not the ones kind of giving everything to them, they have got to find a way. And, you know, I know each program is doing their own thing, but, uh, you know, people listening that don't know if it's a player or a coach I'm sure what to do is, you know, they've got to be able to find a way every day to put in work for the baseball. And whether that's uh, making up, I've seen some cool videos on uh, players, you know, around the country that are doing things to lift with no weight rooms. Um, but I would say, you know, kind of the development piece is, is what tool, you know, the guy, each guy knows which tool is lacking to where it needs to be. It's find that tool and just fully develop it. And, you know, some of that strength, some of that repetition, but, you know, these guys need to, to know when it's work slash baseball mode. And then when it's okay to just go be a teenager. I mean, no one's saying you got to spend 10 hours a day just doing all baseball. I mean, these guys still have school um, online, but you know, they need to set aside their work time. And when is it time to be in the baseball mode for an hour and training mode for an hour to lift, run, whatever it may be, um, put the cell phone away, put the schoolwork off to the side and, and just, you know, like I said, be where your feet are. That's a, a common phrase that we use. And at the dinner, dinner table, be your best family member you can possibly be. If you're doing your homework, then everything's off to the side and you're going to be the best student. but you've got to um, make your routine, make your schedule. I encourage guys to use calendars and, and to, to look at their hours. Uh, I think it's pretty mind blowing when, when cash goes over their 24 hour map on where, where guys are putting their time. I think, you know, video games, sometimes girls and things like that, they don't realize till they see like what percentage of my day is actually going into the Xbox. Like, wow, 10%. Like that's, that's, that's insane. Um, you know, so by them understanding where is their time going, then they can be productive. But like I said, I go back to just routine and they got to find daily ways just to get better and to get ready. Cause if you're just going to show up, 
a week before and swing the bat, you're in the wrong sport. I mean, you're going to get left behind quickly come summer ball. So, you know, these guys have got to stay hungry. And it'll show. The guys that can do it will be rewarded. The guys that don't, you know, will have a little price to pay. And I think that's how you separate. There's a lot of good players in the Northwest, a lot of good players over the the, the course of the country. And now is just an unbelievable time to see who can separate. And the guys that do will love it. And the guys that don't will be playing a lot of catch up. Absolutely. Well, Kyle, thank you so much for coming on. I really appreciate it and hoping to, to see you this summer. If not, you know, maybe in the fall. Yes. Yeah, thank you. No, I really appreciate uh, you having me on. Love what you're doing. I know you fall just in line with uh, what a lot of the NWAC coaches are doing, where it's a lot of work for the, for the love and the passion and, and not the, uh, not the paycheck, but uh, no, it's been fun to listen to all your guests and humble if you asked me to be on. And uh, no, I love what you do. You bring a lot to the Northwest and I always love, chatting with you and our guys uh, when we get a chance to at the NWAC tournament. So hopefully we'll be seeing you there again. Absolutely. Well, thank you, Kyle, and have a good day. Yes, you too. Thank you. Bye. So, guys, that was Kyle Crustangel. He is the head coach for Yakima Valley Community College, the head coach for the Yakima Valley Pippins, and really, it, it really is fun to have him on here just uh, to talk uh, about baseball. I love talking to the guys from the NWAC. Um, whether it be from Yakima, Spokane, Lower Columbia, Everett. It's just, it's a great league, great conference. There's just some great baseball up here in the Northwest. So with that, guys, that was episode nine. Check out next week. I actually have guests lined up. I actually have guests for tomorrow as well. Uh, so we got more coming at you. Lots of great guests, lots of fun topics. And uh, guys, this is 90 Know It All podcast. Your host, Josh, and have a good day.